This episode of Let's Talk Mate is brought to you by Novatech. Thank you to Novatech for sponsoring the show and helping to support men's mental health. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Let's Talk Mate, it's Solent Minds Men's Mental Health Chat. And you might be wondering, this is a bit of a weird time for us to be posting the Let's Talk Mate because this is a week early and it's on a Friday and it's the second week in the month versus the third week in the month. But there is a reason for that. It is, of course, uh, Suicide Awareness Day. So we have got a little bit of a bonus episode for you today. And of course, as it suggests, this will this um, will be treading on the topics of suicide and mental illness leading into suicide. So trigger warning now. If you aren't feeling totally up to this kind of talk, switch off. You can go watch other podcasts that we've got. You can go see other content we've got. And also in the description below, there'll be a load of our services, our support lines. There's loads of people within our company, within our area and nationally that will want to help you. So we're here for you and those other places are here for you. Um, but this might not be the podcast for you. Um, without, before we get introduced to my guests, I'm a new voice, that you, a new voice, a new face you might not have seen hosting this podcast before. My name is Sam Clark. I'm Digital Content Officer of Solent Mind. Um, and now without further ado, let's get into our guest. Uh, so great to, to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me on. My name is Alice Hendy. Um, I'm local to the Solent Mind, so I'm based in Stubbington. And uh, I've recently set up a charity called Ripple, which is um, first and foremost in memory of my brother, Josh, who sadly took his own life in November 2020, um, but is also a tool which I believe is going to save many, many lives going forward um, on the internet. Hi, I'm Izzy um, or Isabella. So um, I currently am running a campaign called Positive Changes in Placements, which is aimed towards getting universities to have a look at their policies and their wellbeing support that they've got in place for their placement students and making sure that this is strong enough so that they feel that they are being adequately supported um, through a particularly difficult time. Um, I lost my brother Harrison to suicide in December 2020. Um, he was a PGCE student teaching secondary maths education in a university up in Manchester. Um, and after we lost my brother, um, which has been absolutely awful, um, I realised there was a lot more that needed to be done for placement students, but that was also based on my own background because I'm a nurse and I did a lot of placements during my training. And I recognise that there isn't enough support for placement students. Um, and they really do need to be supported. University students are already in a very vulnerable position. And I think placement students are, have that extra level of complexity with their studies. Um, and I think universities need to be doing more and they need to be being held accountable for what they are doing for their placement students. So yeah, that's what I've been doing since December. Yeah. And obviously you kind of touched it there. Um, actually the podcast episode that will be airing next week is all about students and student mental health um, with it coming in September and students coming back now. Um, so yeah, just talk a little bit about that and you know how that can be for a lot of uh, especially obviously there's a men's mental health chat for men going into students I know personally I struggled with this kind of very almost exact definition of what it was meant to have a student life as a man like what is this student life can you talk a little bit about that and from conversations you had with your brother originally of and things you have learned of since in terms of things he struggled with in that regard yeah, so my brother did his undergrad um, at Manchester and then he was doing his PGCE. And I think there was always this expectation that university life was going to be absolutely fantastic. It was going to, every day was going to be brilliant. You were going to be hanging out with your friends. There wasn't going to be much work involved. Um, and I think he struggled during his undergrad, um, but he also struggled in his postgrad because there was a lot of pressure on him. There was a very limited support from the university and there wasn't the safety nets in place to kind of prevent him from feeling that way. So for example, he ended up having to self-isolate with um, because of COVID back in November time. And he was so worried about his hours and that he wasn't going to make up his hours. And there wasn't that support system in place to kind of reassure him and highlight that actually, this was a one-off time. It wasn't his fault. At the end of the day, it was one of, the, one of the students that came in with COVID. So that's why he had to isolate. Um, but I think he had that kind of that feeling where university was meant to be absolutely fantastic and it was going to be brilliant. And it wasn't always that way. It was more challenging. 
what are the in, things in particular that you're trying to push for and what are the things in particular you really want if it is universities listening to this podcast what would you be saying to them right now um so what i really want to achieve from it is um universities to have a look at their unnotified absence policies so in the sense of what happens if a student doesn't turn up to placement is the placement contacting the university and are the university chasing that up and i think at this point we need to start considering that placement students are they're almost employees if i didn't turn up to work i would hope and i know that my manager would be like that's really odd i'll try and get in contact with izzy but you know what we've got her emergency contact details we'll call her mum and no one did that for my brother and it wasn't until the day after he passed away that we called up his university to say he'd passed away and they had no idea that he'd never turned up to placement and I think that really highlights that they're not treating placement students as they would their employees or, hope, or how you would hope employees are being treated. Um, but it also highlights to me that they're not actually thinking about their welfare. Um, so that's one thing is definitely looking at the unnotified absence policies. But the other bit is also looking at the wellbeing support that they're providing for their students. So how often are they checking in with their placement students, particularly those on industry placements for a year or even short placements? How often are you are they really finding out how their students are doing? Is there a support? Is there a way that students can get in contact with the university easily? So, for example, students on year abroad, have they got a helpline for them that is open 24 hours of the day? Because obviously, with bearing in mind different time zones. Um, but also having forums for placement students so that they feel like they are around their peers. Um, and offering them various different kind of well-being um, check-ins, but also like offering them specific counselling. And I think the internet and social media has come, has come up a lot in basically all of our episodes of Let's Talk Mate, whether it be the body image episode, whether it be the anger episode, this social media and this internet thing comes up constantly because it is it is a, a prominent discussion within the kind of um, mental health field within uh, especially of this generation's mental health um so talk to me a little bit about what it is that ripple are trying to do and why that why that has become a thing that you've become more aware of yeah so um when i was told that my my brother had taken his own life um as his older sister i i went searching for answers immediately and wanted to know you know why and and what he, he was looking at potentially on the internet. So my background is IT and cybersecurity. So that's what I do in my day job. And I had a look at Josh's search history and I found some really um, distressing and, and horrible content really that he'd been looking at on the internet. Um, things like how to go about ending his life. Um, and some websites that he was visiting were even encouraging him to do it, which made me of course, you know, really, um, upset, angry, and gave me a desire to make a change. So Ripple is a tool to do that. In terms of how it works, it's a browser extension. It's available to download for free um, on a laptop or computer. And the idea is that when somebody searches for something relating to the topic of self-harm or suicide, then my tool will be activated it contains a message of hope at the top and a selection of different mental health resources to help that person. Not everybody likes talking over the phone, um, you know, particularly younger people. And my brother was absolutely a part of that. He was 21. So the, the fact that it contains a, a selection of different mental health resources like um, Samaritans, like NHS 111, like the Shout text line, calm web chat facility and other apps and forums that you can go on to um, I think is a really positive thing and it just provides people with more of a choice um, as to how they can go about getting some support. A lot of people and I think there's a, there's always this kind of language where the, the idea that people want to end their own life when I think a lot of the time it's people just not seeing another option um, so having tools like this where when they're looking for those ways, where they're looking for harmful things, that you can see, oh, there is all these other options. And it makes it almost a lot easier for them because it's not just, you know, you get a lot of a post where it's like, oh, there is help out there, there is this, there is that. Yeah. But that finding that energy to find that help is can be so hard. And I think this is one thing yeah. that's it's taken that away. 
exactly so it comes up at a time when you're most vulnerable so I'm you know I'm taking that real job of having to search for what is available out there away from people and hopefully making it a lot easier for people to get the support that they need in a way that suits them and you know that can be a big effort for somebody who's experiencing mental health crisis to have to go online and try to find you know alternative ways to get support can be a real effort and to be honest can be the difference between you know life and death in some instances obviously we talk about this as a men's mental health podcast and it, a lot of the topics that come up are these kind of extra pressures on men in terms of you know man up it's a thing you hear quite a lot you know just in general like that attitude that men have to face um in terms of talking and especially at university like I know a, a lot of the kind of guys that I was around in my first couple of years at university there's no chance I would have opened up to them about how I was feeling um so how how did did you have feel like that was something that Harrison struggled with as well where he felt like because of being a man and because of the way men are raised that you struggle to open up about certain things especially with other men yeah I do think so I think he also kind of had this um I don't know this persona that he wanted to always look after me and my mum and he wanted to be the man of the family because we grew up without my dad kind of in the picture and I think that put a lot of pressure on him and he wasn't able to kind of talk about that pressure because it's not something that men tend to speak about but there is that absolute pressure of men need to be the the man of the house so they can't talk about their feelings and all this and although things have definitely improved over the past few years I do think that because he was going into a profession such as teaching he didn't want to overly talk about it and disclose his his mental health issues because he didn't want to not be able to get jobs and also not be able to like not fit in necessarily with his peers as well um but I think there was that big pressure of of kind of not feeling like he could completely talk about it he did say the odd thing and he was very very supportive for other people's mental health um so for example last world mental health day in October he posted on his Instagram story like if anyone needs anything if anyone wants to chat to someone like someone that you don't know so well my mess my dms are always open like my this is my phone number please call me and it's still on his instagram now because he put it as one of his highlights and he was so open to kind of trying to help other people open up but he didn't necessarily feel like he could himself and i think that's because he also he didn't want to worry anyone else similar to harrison um so izzy's doing some fantastic work in universities in particular um and i'm absolutely working alongside her as two sisters together with this but Josh was similar to Harrison in that respect. You know, he would always be there for friends and family. But when it came to him and his own mental health, it wasn't on his priority list. Um, and it should be. It should be on everyone's priority list. You are absolutely worthy of having a conversation. And as hard as it will be to do that, um, you will often find that the reaction is very positive to you because people want to help you and want to help you get through it um so as, as hard as it is please please talk and yeah just anything else you want to touch on if that if people want to support the cause is there any ways that they can support is there any way anywhere they can go to keep up with what um you're doing yeah so I've got a um twitter page which is at placement change um and I've also got an instagram account which is at positive changes in placement um and if you have any links with universities or you have any links kind of within the government so that we can start to get this through through parliament as well because i'm working with quite a lot of other families um then let me know get in contact with me send me a message on instagram um i'm hoping to be able to start up a newsletter soon um just work has been absolutely crazy <laughs> um or if you're able to help with anything like social media or creating a newsletter etc then that would be so appreciated because I'm struggling with time at the moment. I think my final message is please download Ripple for mm. free. Um, go onto my website, it's ripplesuicideprevention.com. Have a look around um, and download it. I'm on all social media channels. And I think from a personal perspective, um, the heartache that I experience every single day from the loss of my brother is catastrophic probably I would describe it as and it's it could be preventive preventable 
So please, please don't take the same decision. Things will get better. There is people out there ready to help you. And please just get support if you need it, because there is so much out there ready and waiting for you. For all the latest on Let's Talk Mate and other Solent Mind stories, follow us on social media. That is at Solent Mind on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you next month for the latest episode.